is 160 traps out on, at one time. Right now I've only got like 52 traps out, but I don't rely on my memory to remember where all these traps are. So I draw myself maps like these. So yesterday I had traps all down through here and I pulled them and I wrote here, I pulled 28 traps. Okay, so today's line starts right here where we're at and I call this the hill. And the hill is right here. Right here. Can you see the hill? I can't see the hill. I can't even use my imagination to see the hill. Sometimes it's easier to go on the other side of the hill and look back at it. Can you see the hill? <laughs> that is a hill. I'm over the hill. <laughs> so what we've got is the main stream coming down through the swamp. And it narrows down out here and goes on out. This little guy had, had some rat poop up in here. So I set that to catch him as he comes off the main stream up. That's as fresh as it gets. In fact, he probably did that when that rocket blasted. <laughs> That's what I was saying. You, you've heard of the Fur Fish and Game magazine. It's the, for all sportsmen. Anyway, in there, every month they have the, a section they call, I Knew That. Yeah. So, I sent in a suggestion that rather than use the flagging tape that we all use to flag our traps, we use these little guys. We like little bread sack ties. Tie your flagging tape on it. You snap it onto the branches. There you go. When you get ready to move a trap, like I'm moving now, I take the flag, I'm gonna put it on something over there. This is my standard setup. I put the stake down through the trap like that. It helps to stabilize it and keeps it away from the trigger side. 99 times out of 100 is how I put my traps. If it's if it's put any other way, I know somebody has pilfered my stuff. I don't want to destroy the whole area too bad. So when Mr. Rat comes back to visit this spot, That'll be waiting for you. That constitutes my move, my new trap. So this one, I move so that he has to dive to go under it. Again, he's got the main, the main trail coming off of main water. And so I took this wad of tuis and put it on top of the trap so that he, coming along, if he's swimming on the surface, he has to dive under it. about that deep, but that wide, comes and goes, got water flowing through it. Right now I've got 57 traps out. I'll set 57 traps and then I'll check them the next day. I expect to get about a 50% rat catch. Then the next day, 50% of that, so it cuts to 25, 25%. And then usually around 10% on the third day, and then basically nothing after that. That's when I pick up all my traps, take them somewhere else, and reset them. That's the way I trap. What I'm doing out here is I'll, I start at the headwaters and set traps until I hit the ice. 
then I check those traps. Meanwhile, the ice starts to melt. So then I'll, I'll leapfrog my traps. I'll pick up the first, say, five to 10, move them down at the end of the line, set till I hit ice again. And that's the way I usually trap. I call it chasing the ice. This year, I can set the whole line clear to here. <laughs> On the right side of the post to that that gray looking area. We we'll just go straight across to it. Then we'll go on the back side of the hill back to the vehicle. It's weird over there though. Wait till you see it. Think it looks weird yet? Yeah. It's something that would be interesting. I just I just find it kind of odd that there's nothing really growing. What's that alkaline? I don't know. It could be deer, but I Could be deer. Could be what you're thinking. I, I found the, the broken off tip of that arrowhead right over there, about 10 feet away. Yeah, this is what I call big spring. It's actually kind of scary when you go over there by it. Why do you say that? Well, we'll go over there and I'll, you'll, you'll see. Oh yeah, that's really churning some big soil there. and it reaches up and swallows us. I've seen it before, but I'm not sure what you call it. Look at those fish rudder shrimp. I'm trying to catch them all, too. Nothing in the traps, though, huh? Raccoons. Occasionally, you'll catch a skunk. There's one and down inside of it is the bait. We've got marshmallows and dry dog food. So the raccoon comes along and he smells it. He's going to reach his paw in there, and there's a trigger down there, and he's going to trip that trigger. And this spring is going to spring that way and pin his hand against the inside of part of the tooth. So he'll be caught that way. The walnuts on here to keep the rodents from getting bait out. How many have you caught? I think seven. 
what you got for me? What you got for me? Huh? Huh? Got some grain? Hmm? I see. Uh, saw you yesterday. <laughs> I come and kick your butt. That's what he's gonna do. Can't say I've ever seen one act like that. No, not to come running up and then to do this crow thing. Yeah. Bearsbutt.com and don't forget the S. Bearsbutt.